What is up guys, Max here from Whitcree Media and I'd like to welcome you to our in-depth archer guide from World of Dragonest. This has been my main ever since Identity released Dragonest PC way back in 2010. It's nice that for the most part they stay true to the characteristics of the archer in the PC version. Okay, so first off, let's start with the pros and cons. So archers definitely excel at long range, giving you an edge over bosses that have stomps or melee characters such as the swordsman and or the cleric. They excel at their roles, both attack and support. Their role skills are very important in eight-man raids, and if utilized correctly, they are very valuable in the party. They also have, uh, well, above average DPS. Skills have fast animations. In World of Dragon Nest, there are only a few iframes compared to the PC version. Archers can make up for it with the fast animations. This is very useful when you're casting your chain skills, which we'll talk about more later. They dominate the reputation quests, which are very essential to the game, and you just can't progress without them. However, archers have the edge in hitting the monsters first, therefore adding to your kill count even with just one normal hit. Lastly, they are annoying in the Colosseum. With their right class mastery, kiting skills, skill rotation, and food, archers are basically one of the top classes for PvP. They can go from mid to long range with just a tap of a button. Alright, now let's head over to some cons. First of all, they don't have the best board damage. With the highest non-ultimate skill being Hurricane Dance, which is a chain skill by the way, at 400% attack, it's safe to say that archers are balanced in the board damage section. Compared to the sorcerers who have medium to high board damage, archers just don't have the means to burst down a monster fast and relies a lot of total control over weapon swapping and the right rotations. Next, they are very, very frail. Elves are frail. Elves, they're elves, they're archers. And lastly, this is just pure preference though, but I'm not comfortable with the male archer. His design and voice pack is just... I don't know. It's up to you. If you like it, it's fine. It's just not my taste. Okay, so let's start with the longbow skill. So for twin shot, this is your bread and butter until you get detonating arrow. This has the fastest skill animation and the shortest cooldown, so it's definitely a must-have for starters in your skill bar. Up next, we have Aerial Chain Shot, another must-have skill. What really drives this home though is the critical resist debuff you get from having the attack roll and the minor heal from the support roll. Next, we have Evade Shot. This is a matter of preference as Evade Shot can kill you sometimes. So let's say you dodge the inner stomp of the sandworm. Using Evade Shot might pull you back to the stomp circle because of the animation, so use this skill wisely. Up next, we have Swift Shot. So even in the PC version, this skill sucks. Don't invest on it unless you want to go full-time PvP. The stun effect is awesome, but in PvE, it kinda defeats the purpose of having a ranged character. Next, we have Cheating Point. This is best paired if you go on a support roll instead of attack. Giving your teammates a critical buff goes a long, long way. Paired up with your roll skill, and this is one of the reasons why you definitely need an archer in your raids. And lastly, we have Detonating Arrow. The only downside to this is the long animation. It is a glorified evade shot. The great thing about Detonating Arrow though is the raw damage you can get from it and the AoE. This is your endgame skill at the moment and I can't help but admit that I suggest taking this over Twin Shot in the long run. Okay, so up next we have the Chain skill. So, Charge Shot. I was really disappointed that they didn't give Charge Shot much justice. It's beautiful until you get tracking arrows. It is recommended for PvP because it's it has a stun, but Blooming Kick is there for a better substitute. Next we have Rapid Shot. Okay, I love this skill. The board damage is beautiful and it has multiple hits, giving you more chances to crit. Do not remove this from your skill bar. Next, we have Arrow Shower. Now, while the damage is great, the animation takes up a lot of your time. It's a matter of preference, but I suggest to not think too much of this skill. 
Up next, we have Triangle Shot. Now, Triangle Shot has a lot of advantages. Besides widening the gap between you and the target, which is useful on most occasions, mind you, the animation is fast and has a very wide AoE, making it one of the best mob clearing tools. Up next, we have Siege Stance. So the board damage is great, but the animation is already equivalent to two triangle shots. Don't think too much about this skill, but replace Arrow Shower with this once you get it. And lastly, we have Tracking Arrows. So if you're tired of annoying bosses dodging your skills, then let this skill do the job for you. The fast animation and a decent board damage makes this a must-have skill. The crit resist debuff is a nice bonus too. Okay, now we're done with the longbow skills, let's head over to the crossbow. Starting with Willow Kick. This is a great starter skill that goes a long way until you get Spiral Vortex. You can choose to go full ham with this or not. If you have enough red gems to make a full reset, then by all means, go full ham. Next, we have Kick Shot. So this is the trademark skill for Acrobats. This is one of your must-have PvP skills. It's a great gap closer for those pesky ranged monsters and is the perfect skill to use after using your longbow skills. So this is highly recommended. Next, we have Binding Shot. Although this isn't the best in the board damage department, Binding Shot is more centered on utility rather than damage. I would say it is a must-have for mob clearing, but that is up to you. You can swap between this or kick shot depending on your preference, but I always have this skill in all situations. Blooming kick. Ah, uh, blooming kick. It's 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 just there for PvP. Nothing much. Up next we have Spiral Vortex. So this is Rising Storm's little brother and a must-have skill because of the fast animation. If you're looking for those fast rotations. And lastly, we have Rising Storm, which has the highest board damage out of all your normal skills. Personally, I'd recommend this in your skill bar for PvE, but for PvP, that's up to you because it takes a while to do its animation. Okay, now it's time for some crossbow chain skills. So, let's start with Multishot. I have no say in this skill. It's just another chain skill that you leave in the long run. It's good for early duels though because of the flinching effect, but it's a meh. Next we have Circle Shot, which is also kind of like multi shot. Sadly, it doesn't have the iframe from the PC version, but at least the quick animation makes up for it. Next we have DSK or Double Somersault Kick. It is my favorite skill from the PC version, but it is pretty balanced here in World of Dragon Nest. The debuff you can get from it with the attack roll is beautiful, and the animation is pretty fast for a chain skill. Next, we have Cyclone Kick. So the only downside with this is the long skill animation. The damage is great though, so I highly recommend this in your skill tab for variety. Next, we have Eagle Dive. Personally, I'd like to take this over Cyclone Kick if only it wasn't too centered on PvP. The enhanced effect doesn't work on bosses, making it only useful for normal mobs and PvP. Last but not the least, we have Hurricane Dance, which is another must-have skill in your skill bar. It has the highest damage over all your normal in chain skills, so there's no question about it. Yes, the animation is quite long, but on the attack roll, it works wonders due to the iframe for the duration of the skill. Note that this is best used as a finisher skill once you've done your DSK. Alright, so let's head over to my favorite part, the ultimate. So, starting with Arrow Barrage, which is by far the best PvE ultimate for the archer. Try to time it right, like during a slow attack animation from the boss or basically after a skill from the boss. You can also line up strong mobs and clean them up with this skill for faster quests. Next we have Revolution Ballista. In a way, RB's edge is that it has a knockup, which is great for team PvP. I don't like it though since the animation leaves you way too open for a counter attack. Up next, we have Divine Rage, and I kid you not, the multi-hit factor works wonders with this one. It deals more damage than Arrow Barrage, and it's perfect for single targets like bosses, but you will lose that range factor that makes up the Archer. And lastly, we have the best and coolest skill for the Archer, 
Spiral's Edge. This is a 10 out of 5 for me. Kidding aside, it's best for PvP and fast mob clearing over dealing best damage. It's a hit or miss depending on your crit rate. Okay, now it's time to head over the roll skill. So for your attack actives, definitely take Wise of Owl, Chain Trampoline, and Rage of Owl. Now, for Wise of Owl, it is a crit buff. This is a no-brainer. For Bullseye, if only the skill was ranged like the PC version, then it should be worth it. The problem is that it is not that effective as a roll skill, so don't invest on it. Next, we have Sylph's Aid. Uh, which is the, the only great thing about this skill is the slow immunity. Sure, you can play around with a threat reduction during boss runs, but in an organized raid, surely the warriors and clerics will do their jobs, right? Right? Uh, for Chain Trampoline, it is another must-have skill if you plan to go on full glass cannon. Cast this first before Rage of Owl and be sure to do the proper setup for unleashing your skills on those poor bosses. And lastly, for Rage of Owl, this is why Bullseye is irrelevant. Getting sure critical hits for 10 seconds is considered a blessing. So, let's go to the support actives. So, starting with Spirit Bless, I gotta say bless this skill. For some odd reasons, archers are leaning more on the support role rather than clerics because of this. It has the best party heal, so definitely max this out. Next, we have Spirit Boost, the second reason why archers are leading more on the support role better than clerics. No question, this is a must-have for raids. Next, we have Spirit Excel, a critical chance buff for the party. No questions asked, take it. Second to last, we have Evade Tumbling, so this is highly situational. If you're having a hard time evading the boss mechanics, then grab this skill and use it well. The small health regen is also a good bonus. And lastly, we have Showtime, which I wish this skill paid more homage to the PC version. But instead, it is a lackluster party buff that's only useful if the party's coordinated during raids. Spirit Boost is a better all-around skill. Now that you know which skills to get or ignore, let's move on to the skill rotation. So before we begin, it is important to note that the skill rotations I'm about to show you are only applicable if you know when to execute it. So I highly recommend using these rotations when a boss has a downtime. Also note that before you start any of these rotations, make sure you use up all of your normal skills and do not use auto battles so that you can fully utilize the animation cancel. Okay, starting with the longbow. So, you open up with tracking arrows for that debuff, followed up by rapid shot, and then triangle shot, and then use aerial chain shot, but cancel it using tumble, or you can choose to tumble forward or any direction, and then use up rapid shot again, and then end it with tracking shot. You got that? Let me slow it down for you. Okay, so for equipment, so in World in Dragoness, it's more about making the practical choices for you to survive as a free-to-play player. As of the moment, Sea Dragoness is the best way to go while skipping the Kauda and Felis set. The end game is the Ancient Warrior set, but it's more of a luxury than a requirement. Based on my experience with Identity, it's safe, it's actually safe to use the second best choice since there are more patches coming up. But if you support the game and don't have problems over money, then go ahead, grab that critical plus attack set. And if you're lucky, aim for the ultimate set. But I have to say, that's just overkill. Also, make sure you aim for the enhanced equipment set effects. Having all of your gears at plus 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 will have set effects beneficial to you. Lastly, for accessories, it's always nice to start with the Hagen set if you can obtain it and skip everything else until you get to the Ebony set. Same rule applies with the Ancient and the Akasha sets. 
So, for stats. So, crit damage will always sound tempting, but it is pointless if you can't even crit. The order of the importance in gear suffixes are as follows. Starting with ultimate, the second would be crit, the next would be attack, and then crit damage, and then penetration, and lastly, defense or health. So, for your pet, it's always the best to get the crown corgi. The second best would be the Husko. You also have the, the option for the Telnomaro shop and the blue short hair if you are a cat person. Next we have the mount. So dragon, the dragon, dragon, dragon. Next would be the nine tails. And lastly would be the ghost horse phantom. Okay, let's head over to awakening. So starting with a five piece orange sandworm for that spirit obtain rate, it's always a good option. Then you pair it up with one piece of each, green to situs and blue to situs. Next would be a green and orange fell, one piece for each. Okay, moving on to grinding. So it has the same priority as stats, although you can choose to balance it out with defense and health. So again, let me remind you, first priority should always be crit, next would be attack, next would be crit damage, next would be penetration, and lastly, defense and health. That was a handful. Thank you so much for making it to the end, and I hope you found this guide useful in your journey to become Legendia's best archer. If you think I missed something, please comment down below, and also please do like and subscribe to our channel as it would mean so much to us. We're still starting up this channel, so expect to have more detailed guides soon. Peace, be nice, and don't forget to kiss Berlin goodnight.